Hello, my name is Lauren, and I have been teaching myself to digitize for the past year and a half. And I like to share my processes with you all here. And today I just wanted to make a quick video going over my process for how I make embroidered patches, just sharing the materials I use and what's the process I follow to get the finished result. So right here, these are some of my more recent patches where I've honed in and perfected my patch making process. And I'll show you how I go about creating these. So first, let's talk materials that you're going to be needing. For stabilizer, this is tearaway, and I will use two sheets of this. Then when it comes to the actual material that the patch is embroidered onto, I use patch twill. So I have white and black. Those are the only colors that I use as my base for making patches. And patch twill, this is a large roll. I bought these two huge rolls. I think I got them from Coleman and Company online. This material is specifically made for patches. So when making patches, I've tried using canvas and felt in the past, and I didn't like how the end result was. If, if we look here, here are two patches I made when I first started out digitizing and making patches. And as you can see, the felt, while it is a nice sturdy material, I just feel like it looks kind of fuzzy and not that clean of a look. Whereas if we compare that to this patch here that I made on some of the black twill, it just has a much cleaner look. Then lastly, we have the iron-on backing. So this is an optional material, but I like my patches to be iron-on. So after the patch is finished, I will cut some of this out and stick it to the back so it can be adhered to, you know, a patch or a jacket. This is a large roll of Madeira's heat and seal. I bought this directly from their website. Unfortunately, they only sell a large roll like this. I think it costs like $70, but I've had this for almost two years and it's lasted me a while. There are various other types of heat seals you can buy, but I do find that this is a great one that sticks very well. So I've gone ahead and cut out two layers of the tearaway stabilizer and I've hooped it in my hoop here. I've also cut a piece of the black patch twill. So when I'm doing patches, I don't like to hoop the twill fabric. One, I think you're wasting more fabric and this, you know, it's pretty significantly more expensive than buying normal fabric when you're buying patch twill. So in order to save on the amount of twill I'm using, I will do what's called the floating. So I've cut a size that is going to fit my patch and then I'll just lay it on top of my hoop. And rather than using a sticky adhesive to kind of paste this down, when I digitize my patches, I will go ahead and have kind of a basting stitch that's going to lay down a square and it's going to lock the fabric into place. Then it's going to move on to stitch out the actual patch. So now that we have our hoop ready and assembled, let's go ahead and head over to the machine and stitch out the design. Okay, so our patch has finished sewing out. And as you can see, the basting stitch I put in the beginning held everything down. So I was able to float the design without hooping my fabric. Now we're just going to take this out. And remove the tear away. And then going to just make a little cut so I can get the tear away that was inside the basting stitch. So now that the tear away stabilizer has been taken away for the most part, we are just going to take some extra small sharp scissors. These are embroidery scissors here. And we're just going to cut around the edge of the twill fabric, getting as close as we can to the satin stitch with, without actually cutting into the satin stitch.
So we've cut out our patch here, and now it's time to adhere the iron-on backing. I've cut out a small piece of the iron-on backing heat seal, just a little bit bigger than the size of my patch. We can see this is clear film is the actual heat seal it's going to melt. It's basically a glue when we stick it on the back of our patch and do the iron over it. This is just a wax paper that you can use to hold on to before you are ready to use it. So I have my heat seal, the patch, we have our iron over here that's heating up. I have it set to medium high, no steam. And then I'm also going to be using these Teflon sheets to make sure that the iron on backing doesn't get stuck on my ironing board. These Teflon sheets here are heat resistant and if I get any of this heat seal on the Teflon paper, once it's hot and melted, it won't stick. It'll just peel right off. So I have two layers of the Teflon. First, I'm going to turn my patch wrong side facing up. Then I have my heat seal here. There's actually two sides. One is smooth and the other is bumpy. The bumpy side is going to be adhered to the back of the patch. And then I could use this extra wax paper that came with the heat seal and just put it on top, but I'm going to just use another Teflon sheet. I'm going to place it on top, make sure my patch is in the right spot. And then with a the hot iron, again, no steam, we're going to apply pressure for about 15 seconds. Okay, so it's been 15 seconds. Let it cool for a few seconds before I peel off this Teflon. It's been a few seconds now, so let's go ahead and peel this off. And you'll see the Teflon just peels right off the heat seal. And there we have our patch. Now I'm just going to cut and clean around the edges. So here's the patch all cleaned up. We can see the heat seal on the back is dry and it makes that nice seal when I'm ready to put it on a backpack or jacket or any item of clothing, I can just iron it on. One last step though before we finish is I like to take a lighter and quickly sear the edges to kind of prevent any fraying of the twill. And now we have our patch with nice clean edges. And that's all there is to it. I hope you found this video useful. If you make any of your own patches yourself, let me know if this technique works for you. I'd love to hear how it goes.